Hello, everyone. Hello, Dr. Michael Lightman. We're continuing our series of talks, Introduction of the Book of Zohar, and today we are going to delve into the article called Lock and Key. So, let's start with the simplest thing, probably. The name itself, Lock and Key, probably a symbolical depiction of something that's concealed and there's probably some kind of key, some kind of approach to the revelation of whatever's hidden. So, what does the Book of Zohar hide or conceal from us in this article? Well, the Book of Zohar, what it conceals from us First of all, is the whole of creation. And it conceals it in such a way that we start understanding that really everything's concealed from us, hidden from us. We expect for it to reveal everything to us. But the book, it's not intended for that. The book's intended for us to become convinced, for us to discover that we are in concealment. And this concealment, it is what constantly works on us, influences us. We are in some very narrow aspect of the perception of reality. And this reality is constantly applying pressure to us that we don't understand it, that we don't understand what is going on with all of us. And in general, with the whole of nature, and this way, we, in general, are in a kind of concealment. And opposite to this concealment, there is the option to reveal, an opportunity to reveal. And this is what the Book of Zohar tells us about. What or how can we come closer to nature that is concealed from us, and how can we start revealing it? Behind it, discovering its forces, schemes, different kinds of wondrous phenomena. And this way we will feel and understand and discover what is nature in and of itself. What's the main thing that's concealed from us? I understand that there are many concealments. Man's potential is concealed from him. Our future is concealed. The governance is concealed from us. There are many kinds of concealments. What's the main thing concealed from us? What's concealed from us is the general force of nature called creator that includes, encompasses everything within himself or itself, if we're talking about a force. Everything that exists in nature, the still vegetative, animate, and the human parts of nature, all of them together, leading all of us, everything toward a certain goal. And that which is concealed from us, we'd like to reveal it, we'd like to find out what is our destiny. But unfortunately, we can't reveal that yet. We're revealing a bit from here, from there, but actually, the more we reveal, the more we understand that there's much more, much greater things that are concealed from us and that we ourselves are not in the attainment of them. So the Book of Zohar, it reveals the reality of that which is hidden from us, that I understand that something's hidden, concealed from me. That's already a kind of revelation. Yes. Okay, so let's start with the article. The article starts like an article, uh, uh, other article, two sages are walking along the way, 
they come to a certain field. I'll read it. Of course, we have this article translated into various languages. You can find it in our archive. You can read it. Rabbi Chia and Rabbi Yossi, these are two sages, were walking along the way when they arrived at a certain field. Rabbi Chia said to Rabbi Yossi, you're saying Barashit, which is implied in Bereshit. Uh, and it is so indeed. And the question is, who are the sages in me? We're talking about the inner development of a person. Obviously, it's not something historical. What's this way? Why is there an emphasis on the fact that they've approached a certain field? Why not a forest? What do all of these concepts mean? Um, the thing is that it's really like our life. We need to cross the field. In this field, we need to find our path. And it's good that there is someone with us along the way, a friend with whom we can discuss our path, unite, connect with, and to try and scrutinize, are we on the right path? Oh, we can scrutinize our goal, etc. So the thing going on here is pretty much an event that we come across a lot when we want to do something in life. And we have a partner, someone who accompanies us, and we talk to them. And this way we come to a certain conclusion, special conclusion of what do we need to do in order not to go astray in regard to our goal in life. Well, the way, obviously, that's our path in life. What's the field, then? The field is a field in which a person needs to choose his direction. And in that field, to find the right path that would lead him to the purpose of life, to its meaning. And not that he'll just exist just so in vain miss out. So the field is a place for one's work, for a person to do the work in order to find the right path. Yeah. Well, it says that the Torah is Zeranpin, as we've learned, Zeranpin is one of the ten sefirot that includes six in it. And what does it mean that uh, as I said, Bereshit that the Creator that created all of nature and that all of nature is beneath Him. He has created it out of six parts. The Creator Himself, He is, He influences or works our nature through His three upper Sfirot, Keta Ruchma Bina, after which come these six Sfirot, Chesed Gvorat Tiferet, Netzach Hod Yesod Malchut, Malchut being the last seventh one, meaning through six Sfirot, he creates the final seventh one in which his entire thought of creation is realized. Uh, this is all in all what the Book of Zohar speaks of. What does it mean that the Torah is the Zeranpin? Zeranpin is the central part of the system of nature that perceives everything from above and passes it all downwards to its components, 
the still vegetative animate in human nature, and therefore it's considered that the whole of nature is as if Zeranpin. Okay. And then it says in the Zohar, but in the essay Bereshit, item 32, but in the essay Bereshit, it was said that that hidden holy one engraved a carving in his intestines in Bina. What's hidden or concealed, Dr. Leitman? The Creator Himself is the uppermost degree, the Ketel, hidden from the lower ones. Because this is their already final, more corrected state. So, the Creator Himself, He is hidden behind all of these degrees so that ascending to them, clothing in them, when the lower ones clothe in them, meaning so that people in our world will be able to gradually reveal Him, understand Him, and to come closer to Him. So if I correctly understand, there's the thought of creation, these first three degrees, which is the thought, the head, this we don't attain, and the actions of the Creator through the rest of the sphere, this is something that we do attain. Yeah, exactly. Further, it says about the key that opens and closes. There's the key that conceals, and there's there's the lock that conceals, and the key that can open and reveal. What is that quality in a person that opens and closes the lock in this regard? It depends on man's qualities that come closer or move further away from the Creator. Correspondingly, He reveals or locks, conceals the whole of creation from Himself, the whole of nature. So, again, how do I find this key? inside myself that reveals these actions of the Creator to me. If you replace the quality of reception in you to the quality of bestowal, and this can be done only if you are in a group, if you're connected with others just like you, where mutually you help each other to rise above your ego and to reveal yourself for the sake of others. And this way, in a group, what happens is that by revealing to each other, by coming closer to one another, it becomes also clear to you how can you reveal the whole of nature. So if I understand it's according to the law of equivalence of form that I can reveal the actions of the Creator only if I myself will perform similar actions. Yes on my desires. Yes. Further, he writes, there are many hidden treasures in that palace, one atop the other. What are, first of all, what is a palace inside the person, or palaces, and what is the treasure? Well, palaces, these are the kelim, the vessels that we reveal tremendous, tremendous desires that can be revealed and filled with the upper light, with the upper riches, treasures. These are the palaces of the Creator that are revealed in them, in those palaces. And they, well, the treasures here, the riches, it's not like in our world that we immediately think about good stones, gold and silver, but about gems. But here we're talking about attainment, about attaining all the secrets of nature. So, as I understand, the treasure or certain pleasures one gets as a result of connection with the Creator, yes. And for this you need palaces, which are tremendous desires. 
Yes. So, to begin with, we have no desire to reveal these treasures. Right. Why not? Because this is how we're born. We're born in a way that we don't need them. We don't feel anything special about them if we, if we reveal them. We don't feel anything there. It's just like if you give a baby gold coins or something for him it doesn't mean anything yeah logical but uh, I think that many would like to have some kind of connection with the creator that's the treasure depends under what conditions if we're talking about connection of the creator as something that can be built only based on mutual bestowal meaning on similar qualities then what follows is that we need to acquire the same qualities as the Creator has, which is bestow, love, help, etc. These are actually the qualities that the Creator has, and we don't have these qualities, and therefore we don't feel them. We don't feel the aspiration toward them, and to the contrary, once there is some kind of such once there's such an opportunity, we immediately run away from it. So the Creator, which represents complete or utter love and bestowal, we don't need this kind of Creator. Of course not. What for? As the Book of Zohar says about it, and then it says that in those palaces which are our desires, aspirations, there are gates, the Zohar says, that were made for concealing, made to block the lights. There are 50 carved into four directions, and they became 49 gates, since one gate has no side, and it is unknown where it is, above or below, for this reason that gate remained hidden. Where are there 50 such gates? What are these four directions? And why did these gates remain locked? Remain locked? The thing is that we need to reach a state where we will completely reveal the Creator. The complete revelation of the Creator to His created beings means that the created being acquires all the qualities of the Creator. All the qualities of the Creator are 49 gates. And the last 50th is the most fundamental gate. Gate, gates. And we need to reveal them all, and then we will reach the upper palaces of the Creator, and we will reveal to ourselves, sense, feel, who and what He is, His palaces, his laws of nature, everything that goes on in the whole of creation, regardless of distance, regardless of the distance between its different parts, we will reveal it all, attain it all, and it will all enter us become part of our opportunities. So the 50 gates, if I understand correctly, it's the building of our soul or desire. It's It consists of five parts, time tends to fill it. Yeah. So 49 are opened and the 50th remains closed. We can't open the 50th ourselves. It's something that's opened by the Creator. The Creator opens the rest too. But we ourselves have no connection to the last. When the Creator reveals these 49 gates in Himself, He's already connected to the Creator, relatively. And the 50th gate, would it have there some special kind of connection? Yes. Yes, it is complete, complete connection with the Creator. 
А, и далее пишет Зор так. Uh, Zohar further writes, within those gates there is one lock and one narrow place in which to insert that key. It's neither inscribed nor apparent, but only according to the inscription of the key, who do not know in the narrow place, but only in that key. And he further says that in the beginning God created, in the beginning is the key in which everything is hidden, and this is what closes and opens. So the word Bereshit, in the beginning, I see that it's used a lot in the beginning. Bereshit, in the beginning, includes itself the entire secret of revelation, and that's why it's so important. If we study the concealment and revelation of the Creator, we learn everything that's around this word, Bereshit, it's like a code. With the help of which, we enter nature and reveal all of its parts up to complete attainment. So the word itself, bara sheet, meaning in the beginning, that the entire Torah starts with, is the key due to which we reveal everything? Yeah? That's interesting. How can a word be a key? What's hidden in that word? In the beginning, there was a word. So it says, well, he explains that Bereshit is bara sheet, meaning that he has created six. So what's the secret there? Has created six, so great. We understand that through these, six, through these six actions, the Creator works on us, but we see there's a tremendous number of laws according to which the nature develops us. It's clear. No, no. From the head part of this structure, Ketel Chochmain Bina, comes six parts. Chesed Gvorat Tiferet, Netzach Hod Yesod. And the last part, the Malchut, it is absolutely concealed. And only if the previous six parts are correctly gathered, connected, only then does the Malchut is the Malchut made and the person can understand what comes before it, meaning to understand the entire system of governance of creation. He says that there is one lock and one narrow place to put the key in there and there is some kind of inscription. How inside myself can I discover where to put the key? The key is probably kind of approach, or how do I reveal that, discover it? Well, it's not something mechanical, of course, and it's not somewhere inside yourself that you operate on yourself somehow, but it's something emotional. When you understand that you need to change certain qualities of yours in order to eventually be able to take these qualities of chesed gvara tiferet netzachod yesod in order to fit, to gather these qualities into yourself, take the key, put it in the malchut, and reveal nature. How can a person discover the key and lock in himself? If he studies the wisdom of Kabbalah, he starts feeling his connection to the secret. And, as a result, he comes to that it's necessary for him to reveal the secret. This is the purpose of his existence. And therefore, he heads towards it. Otherwise, there is no other way. If I understand correctly, from your previous explanations, that the secret 
has concluded in that we attain the quality of the Creator, that He is complete bestowal without any thought of Himself, and that for us, egoists, that's secret. And what's the secret here? Because we don't have that quality in us. Yeah, but we're talking about it already, so it's not a secret. Everyone knows, you can read about it. To read about it doesn't mean anything yet. You need to feel that quality in yourself and with its help to see the world. Then it won't be a secret anymore. So the definition of what's a secret, that's the difference. Difference. Yeah, well, as a result of you saying the word, uttering it, so what? So, well, it's written that this is the quality of the Creator that you need to come to, and then you can reveal all secrets. Meaning a person hears it, so already for him it's not a secret. Okay, in the meantime, he can't do it, right? He can't realize it, he doesn't have the power to do it, but at least he already knows that that's how it is, if he believes in what it says. That's the only secret here, or there are other secrets here too? Or is the only secret is that he need to become loving and bestowing as the Creator? That's the Bereshit, that's in the beginning. And from there on, everything becomes revealed. So it's only in order to reach a covalence of form with the Creator. Right. And so it's like you fix your car, and then you start driving and seeing things on the way. Yes. So it's as a means, not a goal. Meaning to acquire the quality of the Creator is a means in order to reveal as thought of creation, etc. Yes. So, in conclusion, we read a very interesting article called Lock and Key from the Book of Zohar. And there are many terms here. So, again, there is the key, there is the lock, and there are the gates. If you can explain how to work with these concepts, they are in our qualities. If we will come closer to each other, then gradually we will come closer to the gate, we will find the key, and we will even discover that we have a key to it. We will be able, with the help of the key, to reveal the gate, to reveal the lock, open the gate, and enter the palaces of the king. So, if I correctly understand, there are certain secrets in creation, there are gates. First of all, I need to find the gates, a certain place, meaning when you pass from state to state, then we have, uh, naturally, there is the lock to the gate, it's like a certain obstacle, yes. Meaning the obstacle for us is in that we can't immediately reveal the quality of the stole. Right, only through the six filled. Otherwise, the person would immediately run away. Were the Creator to reveal the quality of the Creator be, become revealed to him, there's nothing worse. Yeah, there would have been a contradiction in qualities. So only when he finds the key inside himself, which is all already a gradual approach to that key, reveals them 49 gates, that it locks, that he gradually opens, reveals, and then the 50th is, it's already suitable to the 50th in order to understand that the entire life is about bestowal without anything in return for yourself. Yeah, very well. Well, to say it is great. Everything's going to be great. Don't worry. So that was the article, Lock and Key. Till next time, all the best.